That's a one cup of coffee and one my only cup of coffee today because welcome to this YouTube video and I drink maybe five to six cups of coffee a day and that's a little bit too much and that's why I want to drink a little bit more or less coffee. Please subscribe to my channel that you can help me to drink a little bit uh, lesser coffee. Actually, I like green tea and maybe I drink next time green tea. Um, this tutorial here is about a little bit color grading, especially color grading um, of the Lumix S5 Vlog. I filmed a pretty cool Viking Valhalla video with a nice guy. His name is Rickard and I filmed in 100 FPS full HD in Vlog with the Panasonic Lumix S5 with the Sigma 24 to 70 mm f2.8 art lens. This camera has autofocus and it works pretty well. Um, if you want to learn more about the autofocus of this camera, not this video related, um, please subscribe to my channel and watch the video I uploaded before. So, welcome to my project here. Um, we have here a pretty nice project and I show you my way to color grade. I know that's not the way how most people color grade. My color grading way is maybe not with the ultra best calibrated monitor. My color, my color grading is on a TV. I color grade on a Samsung 130 or what is it? Um, 70 inch, um, cent or 130 centimeters uh, Panasonic ultra hd tv it has also a 10-bit panel um it can it can i can grade in true hdr and this panel is pretty big so i i also added um i know people will scream now oh my god he added with magics with vegas but i use vegas 17 pro it's a pretty nice um it's a pretty nice software i like these guys of magics they come from my my home quantity it's a german German company and they are making pretty nice um, pretty nice stuff. I used this program maybe since over 10 years now um, since I downloaded it fully legally um, when I was 15 sure um, I purchased this version and I want to show you now how my color grading workflow is. My color grading workflow is maybe not your color grading workflow and I cannot give you the best LUTs. This LUT will work for everything. No, actually no LUT will work for everything. Sure, I have all these Panasonic conversion LUTs, but um, that will not work on every footage. And I show you now how I use LUTs and I do it. I, I, I do for every project maybe a LUT and I tend to use it for a project and I show you now my color grading way. So. Um, we have here some pretty nice footage and Lumix S5 footage looks in Vlog pretty flat. Um, I pull this down here and I show you how Vlog, la uh, how Vlog looks. Um, that's pretty, that's uh, very flat. You don't see that much color and we want to go from this to this or from this to this. And I show you now how I do this. Um, I have multiple layers here and we come to that in a minute why I use multiple layers when I color grade my stuff because that can work pretty good in my opinion. So color grading. Um, Vegas has a nice color grading tutorial, uh, color grading tool like almost every other um, every other color grading system has this color grading um, tool. Um, and my set is to German, of course, because I am from Germany. We have Autobahn and Bratwurst. These are the shadows, that's the midtones, that's the highlights, and that's the overall image. Um, I work with the waveform monitor where you can see how this is how my vlog uh, looks straight out of camera. That's the vector scope monitor, RGB parade, and histogram. And the first thing I do is I give this a little bit more contrast. Um, not so much contrast that we lose the highlights here. Um, I then tend to darken the image a little bit, but try not to crush the blacks that we have also information in the black areas. When I overdo it, I lose some information here. Um, it's okay to have some completely black, um, black spots in your image, maybe here. Um, but for the for the for this video we will not overuse it and try to um try to keep this picture as best as possible so um i set it to studio rgb 16 to 64 that's the luminance values and you can also set this in your camera 
um, that this program basically reads the output of your camera. That's the luminance values of your camera. Um, when you set this to 1000, your brightest pictures get interpreted at maximum brightness and the darkest part maybe when you have something in your waveform completely black it then portrays it down here um i set it mostly to studio rgb so um after i have here a little bit of uh contrast um i work my way to the saturation because we need a little bit more saturation um not too much saturation actually it looks pretty good when we have this much saturation and then I go my way to the gamma curve. Um, I like this tool not so much when I just click it and drag it. Um, that works pretty fast. Uh, hold control and then pull it a little bit that you can control it more easier. And I tend to like it when it's a little bit more green, the typical film look. And the gain, I show here what this does that only moves the highlights for sure. Um, yeah, sure. Let's Let's make it a little bit a little bit um, blue that we have a colder image and it looks cool and it looks actually pretty good in my opinion. Um, the shadows, I tend to use also a little bit green in the shadows or a slightly bit of, um, of orange, just a little bit. Um, you see here in the vector scope that moves not so much, that moves only, only a little bit. If I set this to, let's set it to 8-bit because we are working with 8-bit footage here. And yes, I move this only a little bit to achieve a nice look. And we can also control the output, the HSL, color curves and the look LUT. I, I don't use the look LUT here. The HSL slider, you can almost um, make this over saturation. That's pretty much saturated i don't like it so much but a little bit more as we had it um the input minimum these guys here transform your image that you can cut the blacks um it works also good for contrast but don't crush the blacks so much because that will look a little bit stupid um you can also rise the blacks a little bit oh and look here we have now saved the blacks here um that's pretty nice then we can go to color curves maybe and make the contrast a little bit more because what this does um when i pull this over here it moves the contrast center around the image look how this guy tra gets transformed when i um only move the dip of the curve up and down um, that moves a little bit the contrast um Let's bring back the the color a little bit because we have no cartoon image here. So um, I'm not a ultra color grading specialist, but I know that one of this 100 here, the waveform monitor, when it shows me 100, probably these bright spots here, um, when I overdo it, we lose some information as well as in the blacks. We can also lose information in the highlights. That's why... I try to never clip the highlights, but this is also not true because sometimes you can clip highlights. So color grading has a very um, subjective matter and do it as you want. You can create your own worlds here. So let's go back to the color wheels a bit. Um, maybe we want to add a little bit more blue in the highlights that the, the blade here looks nice and clear. That looks... That looks pretty cool in my opinion. Um, I cannot recreate exactly this look again because I do so much steps and also this is a different shot um, that I cannot recreate this look. But if I want to have this look now, maybe in this shot, um, I can show you the long way or the short way. So. The long way is you export a LUT. We have a dedicated button for exporting a LUT. That's how you use a LUT. You want to have this kind of color grading. You export a LUT and you go to your Vegas folder, LUTs. Then um, you say this LUT is my LUT. 
Paula123 Viking LUT. So, um, I have now created a little LUT and I want to have this LUT on this picture here. So, set it all back. Go to input LUT. I search for this input LUT. Where is it? We called it Paula123 Viking. I open it. Set it to not linear, tetrahedral is best. I don't know the exactly difference between these two, but I know this is a little bit better. You can also then change the the um, the value of this LUT. I want to have a little bit of a LUT and I want to have more of a LUT. Um, that's okay. Um, we have also we can also apply a luck a look LUT, but we don't do this here. And Actually, this image looks already pretty nice and we don't have to do much more. So we end this and we have now the same values of highlights and shadows as in this clip. Um, there's also another way of doing this. For instance, you didn't color grade it, this one here. Set it all back. Oh, my my color grading is gone. Um, it's it's a thing I can say maybe only in Vegas, but in all other programs too. I right click on this image, say copy, then go to this clip, say right click and event attribute einfügen. Um, that's basically copies everything you did in this clip to this clip. And voila, you have also color graded this clip. That it's pretty easy that you don't have to color grade every single clip. Sure, you have to make some adjustments on some clips. Maybe I want to adjust this clip that it's a little bit dark. Um, I don't like it that it's so dark. I think it looks pretty cool so dark. But for the for the sake of this video, I want to brighten it up a little bit. So this curve is too extreme for me. I brighten it up that it matches all my other clips. Um, color grading is also that you match maybe one clip to another and so on. So, and why are here two clips on top of each other? What is this, Paul? What have you done here? Um, I show it you maybe on this nice clip here. Let's mute this track. Um, let's mute this track on M. Oh, what is this? Okay, we have, what have we done here? What I've done, I face myself. Man, I like Linkin Park. <laughs> Sorry for this. Um, what have we here? Okay, we have actually a pretty decent color graded image. Um, we didn't crush the highlights and because um, we work from the highlights to the shadows now. Okay, um, this was a pretty cloudy day. And when you look at the clouds, it's not completely 100 100% bright. When you look at the sky and it's cloudy, it's cloudy. And 100% would be too bright. If you move this up here that you have, okay, I have the highlights that must be 100% bright. No, that's not true because the sky when it's, look at the sky when it's cloudy, it's not 100% bright. 100% brightness is the sun and it gets blocked by clouds. So you move it to maybe 80. Um, I crush the shadows here a little bit because something is a little bit missing in this information, but that's okay. But I want to go this um, I'll tell you why in another step. So, I have a pretty dark image here. The forest looks moody. He looks moody. And that's pretty nice. So, and then I pressed, asked, you know what? I show it you. Um, that's my color grading secret. Not my color grading secret. Uh, let's copy this for a minute. So, I copy this track on top of this track. Control and moved it up there. So, what is this? So nothing comes close to nice color grading. So let's make that a little bit brighter. Let's use a Bezier masking tool. And the Bezier masking tool works pretty cool in my opinion, that you can choose the mask. Um, and you want to choose the mask at first um, for a curve or diamond or rectangle or oval. We use the oval shape because that's the most easy one for now. And dra maybe draw a little circle around our character. So that's too harsh. And we use the Randunschärfe, which is, which is the edge sharpness. Yes, my system is in German. That's why this is German. So, and what we can see now is that we already um, have a little mask here and we can change the color and everything only in this mask without affecting the other image. Set this back 
and I can now move this a little bit that I have here a pretty nice image um, and have a little bit more contrast. I I like that I can move this mask around. Some people only only highlight the face or anything else, but I like to highlight this whole guy. And let's move that to here. Color correction. No, that was for a different one. Um, that looks, in my opinion, already pretty nice. If I mute this track, you have a, a, a dark image. It looks also pretty cool. But I want to give him a little bit pop, maybe not so much, um, and highlight our character a little bit. Um, you can now look, of course, um, via a vector scope, where are the skin tones? I can zoom into this picture and where are the skin tones compared maybe with V-Log and everything. But you know what? Skin tones are completely subjective in my opinion. Not every skin tone has to be from 40 to 60 IRE. Not every skin tone has to be completely in the middle of red and, uh, red and yellow because... Sometimes you have different different lights and sometimes you want to have your image a little bit greener. I mean, look at the film of Matrix. All the color all the colors in the, in the faces are shifted to green and a lot of a lot of movies I see have not correct 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 skin tones. Skin tones don't have to be correct. It's your world, your color grading and you can do whatever you want with your skin tones. So believe me, um if you want to stand out a little bit and that your movies want to, do, to, to stand out a little bit, move your color temperature the way you want. That's your movie. Yeah. So um, again, you can also then make the image in the middle a little bit more yellow, a little bit warmer or give him a little bit um, colder look and everything. Um, that's completely up to you. And I think that looks completely cool little mistakes can happen. So, secondary color grading. I use the FAB correction, secondary, set OK. I choose effects area, the red one, show me the mask please. Yes, there is the mask. And get everything in the shadows, get everything in the highlights, smoothen it out. Glatten means smoothing, smoothing out. Um, saturation, saturation, not so much in his face, but on this red scarf and saturation up, 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 up. Yes. And smoothing it out a little bit. Thank you very much. That looks okay in my opinion. Um, now, I show you what I want to do here. Um, we have already here a mask. That is the picture without the mask. This is the picture with the mask. That looks pretty cool in my opinion. Um, the, the background, the highlights are not clipped um, because when I want to have him completely correct exposed, it's too dark for him. And when I want to make him brighter, the whole image gets brighter. And I don't want to crush my beautiful gray sky. That's why I created another mask and created a mask around him that, I, that we have him a little bit brighter and not our beautiful gray sky. And now I want to add a little bit, just a little bit red to this here because when I add red to the whole image, the whole image becomes a little bit more red and I don't want this. So this is my mask and I want to have it a little bit more saturation, just a little bit, <laughs> not so much. That looks a little bit artificial, but we can play with the saturation of only the red tones in the image. That would be normal and now I do it a little bit more red. This is without the pop of the red. This is with popping the reds. I think that looks pretty cool. In my sure, we have now a little bit of red ear here, but it's cold outside. In my world, has this Viking guy a little red ear because it's cold outside. Uh, but the scarf looks pretty cool. In my opinion. That looks so nice that they have a little red color pop here. Um, you can also do this with a, another Bezier masking and only color grade this a, a, a little bit more. But for me, is this completely fine. Um, also on these other images, um, looks this pretty cool in my opinion. Um, that's a pretty easy one. Um, I didn't crush the, the highlights. Um, we crushed some blacks here, of course, because I like the look. That is a little bit too bright for me and 
sometimes crushing blacks is okay, in my opinion. Um, maybe we we can also save this and add a little bit a little bit more contrast to this image. Um, the highlights are in now too bright and we have almost the same here. Um, you can move the, the contrast up and down your image um, that, that transform the image a bit. A S curve is not always the way to go. Sometimes you move it like here, sometimes you move it like here. It's pretty subjective. So create your world how you want it. And the HSL sh slider, you have to watch out maybe on skin tones. Um, but for for me our skin tones not always completely the same because it was cold his head his hand was a little bit red so let it be red that's completely okay and that's how i color grade my footage um i begin again with a nice flat image um then i color grade everything around it transform it and do a little lot that i can To, the, 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 that I can take this LUT and move it to here. Um, that is my color grading workflow. I like to color grade in Vegas. Um, that's for me a um, pretty nice system. And with this masking, you can give your, give your color grading a little bit more pop also. Um, you can also track this mask. I tracked my mask here a little bit. Um, that this mask basically follows his face. And I sharpened it also a little bit. I don't know if you can see this because of YouTube compression, but sharpening this image works pretty good because you can see this um, this fell here a little bit better. So um, thank you for listening to my TED Talk. If you want to learn more about my color grading workflow or different color grading scenarios, um, please write a comment that I, I will answer every comment maybe. And... I hope you learned something from my color grading workflow. It's not the color grading everyone needs. It's not the color grading everyone uses. A lot of people tend to use it all completely different, but I do it this way. That's my way of color grading. And I hope you like it because um, maybe you have a different way of color grading. Tell me, write me on Instagram. We see us in the next video. My name is Paul, the German filmmaker. I'm a small business. I'm not a big Hollywood production. I'm not this... Indian guy who or I don't know where he's from and um, tells us you have to color grade this and the this and this and this <laughs> I don't know um, thank you for listening see you next time